Hello, Jill Tisbury at Five Glass. It's the beginning of September here in the UK and it's a beautiful day outside, lovely and misty, giving away the sunshine. And we've got two weeks off. So the studio is closed now for workshops um, for the next two weeks because we have some really exciting news. Uh, we're gonna, well, we're doing a spring clean, which is not that exciting, but the exciting bit is that we're gonna put the lamp working kit in, which we've had for most of the year, and for one reason or another, we haven't been able to get to it. So um, we've, uh, we've closed to workshops to give us time really to have a good fettle in the studio. So um, get really ready for putting the lamp working kit in. So I'm gonna give you a little tour really, because I don't think you've ever seen our studio properly, have you? So let's have a look. So we've got two kilns in here, two main kilns. Um, actually got three kilns in here. Two main kilns though. Um, this is a Hobby Fuser Deep. We're gonna give this a bit of a spring clean as well. We've got, if you have a look in here, we just slumped um, a big dish for a customer in here. But um, you can see it's quite a deep uh, Hobby Fuser or quite a deep uh, inside, I should say. Um, so it means that we can take the bottom floor out. You can't see it at the moment um, because there's bricks in there, but all that bottom floor comes out and that allows you to actually do drop uh, fusing if you want to. So you can do drop vessels and things in there. So that's the Hobby Fuser Deep. Well, she said nearly dropping that. Just turn, close that. And then behind you, this has just slumped a whole load of work for some customers, but it's like the other way up. So it's a bit like the Hobby Fuser has been turned on its head. So this is a Cub Fuser. Um, and as we currently stand, this is the biggest one that you can have on a 13 amp plug. So that's why we've got it. But it's fantastic for building things on the deck, really. Um, so we like that because we like the versatility of the deep and also having a clamshell. Um, you can see all my steels in there. Paul Gardner has been really busy. <laughs> so those are all the steel forms that we use for slumping. Got my cones there, which we, uh, they're just uh, steel beakers. Um, needs a bit of a tidy. All of those steels need recoating, so I just get my boron nitrite and brush it on. I don't spray it on because it's a, a waste. Have a look at the other videos if you want to see all about that. But yeah, so a bit of work to do there, I think. So I said we had three kilns. Um, this is the other one. This is our vitrograph kiln over here. Um, it's piled up with stuff at the moment, waiting for a few stringers to be pulled. So this sits on our, um, it's a catering trolley actually, really cool. First aid kit, always useful. Um, so we tend to fold all of our um, storage up, wheel this out, and we'll use that to obviously pull our vitrograph. Um, so it's a very whistle-stop tour that we're doing at the moment of the studio. If you want to know any, anything about any of the stuff that we've got in here, just drop something in the comments and ask us and I'll, I'll tell you all about it. Um, but I thought, you know, you might just want to have a look around. There's a really important bit that we missed. That's this. <laughs> So this is the key bit that you get when you come on a workshop with us, the tea and coffee, and obviously all of the homemade cakes. These um, two things here, these are all the storage bits, um, and they're, they're just essential to, to have things in their place and all labelled up, because you can imagine when you've got students um, coming in, up to six students doing workshops, you need to know where everything is. It's a bit messy over there because we've just done a two-day enamel course. So um, I've still got to tidy that up. That finished yesterday. And then this. Let's move this out the way. Move my chair. This is actually the Marini shop. So all the stuff you see on our website, all of our Marini. Um, weirdly, there's more than that. We've run out of space there now. So we've got over... Uh, 60 lines, nearly 70 lines of Marini now. Um, all the stringers that I use are sitting over there that um, you've probably just seen. And then we've got storeroom where we've actually got all the bagged up stuff. 
So um, we come in hand and owe this bill. I need a second bigger studio, that's always my excuse. I think I mentioned that these all fold up, which is fantastic. So we're going to do that in a minute and move them into the centre of the room. And they're all on casters. Um, but this is another catering um, trolley. And you can see all my labels, all my notes, all of my pulled marini ready to chop. I just love it like this. It looks great, but obviously I need to chop it because you guys need to order it. <laughs> oh, there's tons of the stuff. We have um, glassware on show that people can actually see when they come on workshops. And then in this corner um, over here, we've got all our sort of shelving areas, all the wet gear. So you can see we've got a lap grinder, a ring uh, saw and a post grinder. It's all a bit messy at the moment. And all the frit storage. All that lovely frit, just waiting to be used. The key bit is over here, this mess of an area and um, that's become a little bit of a dumping ground in the last couple of weeks because we know that we are going to sort this out so this is the biggest bit of work that we're going to do in here over the next couple of days but you've probably spied um, my lamp working torch and an oxycon in the corner so we've not fired any of this up yet, so you're going to get us to see us do that for the first time. Um, we need to put some shelving in here. We need to put some storage for glass rods. And obviously, because most of the glass rods I'm going to use are going to be um, really soft effectra glass, it's different COE to and the frit will be a different COE to the frit that we use for fusing. So I want to keep that all separate. Um, but the main thing is that we need extraction. So if you're going to, need to start lamp working, um, we've done so much research um, around what we need to do, but the biggest bit is that we need to have some uh, uh, proper extraction in there because um, you, you don't want to be smelling the gases and um, all of the heavy metals um, need to be extracted. So, yeah. no, Sorry? Inhaling the gases. Oh, yeah. Not smelling so, them. Yeah, <laughs> inhaling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, John quite rightly is... Uh, is correcting me there yeah you certainly don't want to be inhaling them you've got things like carbon monoxide um, that can be off gassed when you when you're doing this stuff so you need to make sure you've got proper extraction really um, so that's what we're gonna do well I say we're gonna do it the cameraman's really handy at doing this kind of stuff um, so uh, that's exciting it's, it's gonna look really cool and uh, it's uh, it's the start really of uh, the first of our lamp working diaries to chart the journey through how we set it up why we set it up what we chose why we chose it and uh, and how we actually start using that so we're going to fold everything up um move everything give it a good old clean and we'll see you on the other side of that then
Wow, look at all the marini that we found behind the wardrobes. You don't realise how much you accumulate until you start looking at things like this. So all this needed to be tidied. We took the opportunity to seal around um, the bottom of the, the windows, basically to stop the ants coming in more than anything. And also clean the blinds, and this is the best way to uh, to clean them and to dry them. So um, it's John's, that's your photographic um, frame, isn't it? Yeah, the light yeah, frame. Backdrop oh, frame. backdrop frame. More junk. <laughs> Having to overflow outside, really. We did it in two halves, so we moved half of it over to one side of the studio. Look at this, it's lovely when it's it's empty and it's clean. And we moved it all back to the other side of the studio so we could do the other half. It's nicely sealed. Look at my poor kiln there, buried in all that stuff. <laughs> That's a lot of work moving it all, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it'd take a good day, didn't it, just mm. to do that. And then that area needed to be cleared so we could start on uh, in the area for lamp working. Day two of our great big studio restoration. And we've had a delivery. So very exciting. I'm going to open that and have a look and see what we've got. Put my coffee down. Oh Lord, it, that's heavy. Cubby holes for glass. So this is for um, glass storage, for glass rod storage. I'm not quite sure how this is going to fit in yet, whether it's going to go that way or whether it's going to go round. But if I just get my glass, there we go. So um, that's never going to fit there, but anyway, oh, it's there go. But you can see that's the kind of thing, so that we can see the ends of the glass, and we know what colours we've, we've got. And then up here we've got some sort of shelving going on with the extraction, so that's what we're just about to do. We've got our coffee, so we're going to sit down and map out what happens next. <laughs> so this was putting in the worktop. The worktop that we're carrying out there was just put in temporarily. And it was a bit too deep, so we needed to be trimmed down to make it fit better. So that was the first job. Thankfully all the brackets were already there. Took the opportunity to get rid of some extraneous bits like the heater. This is me just trimming down the, the depth of the worktop so it fitted snug and ran in line with the other worktop across the front of the bull nose. this batten's eye view <laughs> yes batten's eye view coming into the studio these are the support brackets battens underneath the worktop these are the legs support legs for the worktop so we changed the the way the legs were or the worktops were going to be supported we didn't want vertical poles down the front which people could knock into or kick or hit their knees or legs on so we decided to go with a different approach, which you'll see in a minute. Just putting in a couple of uprights, which will be used to anchor the leg to, support leg. One either side of that worktop I took out. That metal pole in the front will disappear. So the idea is the worktop's going to come across here. Uh -huh. And then we're going to have a support here out to the front and another one here which will support the worktop and we won't end up with any obstructions at the front when you bang your legs on them what have you we're going to 
do a diagonal brace here. Uh-huh. It's gonna meet with the underside of this batten that we put on. And that's gonna do two of those, one there and one that side. Mm. It'll sit further back, so you shouldn't knock your knees on it. So we just need to measure the distance and cut the angles. Take measure. <laughs> so that's 72 centimeters. And that's 72. So that'd be the, the longest it needs to be, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> measure twice, cut once, as my woodwork teacher would used to say. It's all at the right angle, and you're fixing this in to make it nice and solid. Yep. A bit awkward. Okay. I scrubbed that easy. I haven't <laughs> even done that other leg yet. So you're happy with that? <laughs> Are you happy with that? That's good, yeah, nice and strong. Yeah? It's not going to go anywhere. Okay, so... Um, the thingy can sit neatly there. The oxycon. Okay, so, um, well done. Done that bit. What's the next bit that we uh, need to do on that? Next bit is to drill a bit back. Um, so that's the frame done. We just need to then put the metal work in, the metal tops. Right, so this is the uh, aluminium? Yeah, it's aluminium. Can't remember the, the thickness. Right. We check when it's on the board. It's on okay. The... So and that... attach it underneath here uh -huh. first. Okay. And then we can bend it over. It's very thin aluminium, so it should bend nice and easily. Over the bull nose and over the, the join, is it? Yeah, I'd go over the join, it'll overlap. Yeah, okay. However much we want because it's longer than we need. All right. Get it to the back, bend it upright, and then fix it. Okay, so we've got to work out whether we're going to bend the upright before we do the bull nose or. Bull nose what? first, oh, so right, fix okay. underneath, do the bull nose, get it to here, lay a strip over it, we'll do it outside. Lay a strip of board, timber, ah, okay. along the length, and then we can just pull it up. So we've got to take the worktop out then to do yes, it? Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, deep joy. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, doing it right though. <laughs> just a small bit of metal then that you bring in. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> mm. So this is the aluminium sheet we purchased. The plan initially was to take the worktop out that we'd fitted and then outside bend the piece of aluminium, but in hindsight that probably wasn't the best way of doing it. So we ended up, as you can see here, doing it in situ. So we screwed the aluminium sheet to the underside of the worktop and then started to bend it over. And the aluminium was quite ductile and easy to, to bend. And here I am with a wooden form just bending the metal in place. I countersunk all of the holes and then put screws in to support it. It's, uh, it's about seven o'clock um, on uh, probably one of the hottest days, I would think, of the year this year, even though we're in September. Um, we've got, as you can see here, I've got the bench in. I'll just lift that up. Looking lovely. Very happy with that. Um, so that just uh, really needs a good clean now. Um, we've got the ducting kit to put in tomorrow. I have my paintbrush and you can see the woodwork here. So um, this is typically me. Um, I want it white. So I'm going to paint that and then that can dry overnight. And um, hopefully in the cool of the morning, um, we can try and get the ducting kit in and then we can put the torch in and we get some gas and we can light it up. So um, see you on the other side of the painting. 
Yeah, that looked so much better once it was painted, didn't it? Yeah, it had two coats, didn't it? So it's only had one coat there. This is the shelving that we purchased, which came with loads of horribly sticky labels. <laughs> they were a nightmare to get As up. did the shelf brackets, and they all had to be peeled off as well. So Julie did that. Mm. This is all the ventilation system that we purchased. And took a while to investigate that. The fan that we ended up with is an inline fan with metal blades. We were very conscious that we didn't want to get a plastic one just in case the heat from the torch ended up melting the fan. As we had read on a few forums that this had been a problem to it for a few people. So we settled on this particular model and um, all of the, the component parts for it to uh, duct out. So what are we doing this morning then? We're just mocking up where things are going. Okay. Just to get a, an idea of... So this glass box nearest me is not actually going there. That's just a temporary just, shelf, yeah, yeah. yeah, just to okay. support the shelf. So we're planning on having all that storage where? So here, we have four, two here, two here, screwed to the wall so they don't go underneath it anywhere. Perfect, yeah. We've then got our extractor fan, which is going to sit. It's fixing points are here. Uh-huh. So we're looking at somewhere about there. Okay. I'm just going to put it there for time being. Yeah. We've then got a, a non-return valve. <laughs> okay, yeah. The stop blow back. So that will go in there. Marvellous. And then we've got our tube. Tube, mm. tube, tube. Which will fit on here. Okay. How are you going to cut the tube? What would you cut a tube with? Um, just a hacksaw or a um, jigsaw? angle grinder. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, so we need a little bit in there. It'll probably dictate how, where that goes. Yeah, where this goes. So I might as well fit black or wood. Okay. I'm guessing that can go in once you've cut it. Hopefully. Well, it's okay. You can flare that out a little bit. Yeah. Listen to me. Now I've done silversmithing. I know all about that. Um, so what else we got then? We've got a couple of corners, 90 degree turns. Okay. One in there. Yeah. Vertical pipe. Next one. There somewhere with our flange flare on the end. Yeah, I'm not even sure whether we need that flange, but well, yeah, we can have it on, have it off. We see how we, yeah, we'll see how that works. We'll need to put the torch in so we can mock up how high. Yeah, I would suggest it's probably beneficial to have it on because it'll catch. Yeah. Extraneous gases. Okay. It's a very short bit of pipe that we need, isn't it? That's cool. Yeah, it is. It's very Actually, cool. we've got a bit too much, but never mind. Okay. And then we've got what? We've got a part of brackets. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. To support. Let's find one that's joined up. So, yeah, so each one of these will support. Tube goes around the tube. And we've got a pretty bar down here which comes out the top, and then we've got a little T piece bracket which will fix to the wall. So, what are you doing now? I'm bench testing the fan and regulator, speed regulator. So, that's the fan just above you there on the shelf. Yeah, okay. Yep. There's the regulator. Oh, okay, yeah. So I'm going to, that's the off switch. And Let's then you have can a adjust. little look at that. I'm just coming into there. Ooh. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so you can turn that off, an off switch, and then yeah. you can regulate the speed. Oh, okay. And it's all a little device inside. Oh, okay. 
So you've got to wire this up now? Yeah, I've got to wire it up and just bench test it so we can work out which way round. Make sure we get it in the right way we so that it's... The, yeah, so it's sacking rather than pushing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Plugs are very fiddly, aren't they? Yeah. We're just bench testing the extractor fan to make sure it works. Um, so we've got the fan itself, but we've also got a variable speed controller here, which has also got an off button. So we've just wired it in as a bench testing just to see if it works. And we're about to test it. Oh, it's exciting. So it's off at the moment. So. <gasps> it works, Jill, it works. <laughs> You can adjust the minimum um, speed on the device, but that's the minimum. Wait for it to build up to its operating speed. That's pretty quiet. Let's come yeah. in a bit closer and have a little look at this. Wow. I probably can't really tell how much blowy it is. No, it's what you can fall over. Yeah. Okay, that's not too bad. That's on its minimum. Minimum, yeah. Okay. Let's go a little bit higher. Probably like a jet engine taking off. Oh wow. <laughs> okay, full. <laughs> Loving it. Okay. Successful bench test then, would yes. you say? Perfect. So now we uh, we just need to think about where that's going to go. Yeah, so we just need to install it. Now run the cabling. Okay, we're liking this configuration now. Obviously the other stack of glass storage would turn round. Um, let's just do that and have a look at it. So I guess this is why I'm mocking it up as you go. Um, it's really quite a useful thing because obviously you can see where things go. Um, I think, let me just move back a bit, you can see this. Yeah, so moving that stack over, um, it means you can see me there in the telly. Um, we're gonna move the TV over. Um, but that fan is going to go up there, so obviously there's a bracket and fixings for the wall. And here you've got the, um, what's that called, regulator? Yes, yeah. fan speed regulator. Yeah, so that's going to go on the wall there, Fab. Or ventilatoren. Yeah. German. But your German's really not that good. No, it is isn't, is it? Um, <laughs> you can't be good at everything. <laughs> Okay, so that's cool. Um, loving the new worktop, as you can see. That's looking the business. So that's aluminium. And uh, that's probably it for today, because we're off for afternoon tea. <laughs> Supervisors here. This is Amber, our cat. We're just about to start to drill the hole in the side of the studio for the ducting. So everything's mocked up and ready. This was actually um, quite a bead and healing kiln there. <laughs> it was quite exciting watching this because I was outside and you were drilling from inside. And uh, it felt like a bit of a sort of momentous step as we drilled a huge great hole through the side of the studio. You can actually see how well insulated this studio is when you uh, when this hole comes out. Look at that. This is the non-return valve just uh, pushed in place. So this stops the air blowing back into the studio from outside. And this is the little vent that sits on the outside. 
is the mounting bracket for the fan and the first bit of tubing in place and then one of the little wall brackets to support the um, circular bracket. You can see it's starting to build up there, quite straightforward. So day six we were finishing off the ducting installation. It took a little bit longer than anticipated because like most things it's a first for us and there wasn't much information available to sort of follow. So we were just kind of making it up as we go along. This is just installing the variable speed controller for the fan, so mounting that on the wall. We later put in a carbon monoxide sensor above it. Had a bit of a play around with the fan um, opening. We initially started off with this setup and then decided perhaps it would be better if it was actually facing the torch. So we had a 90 degree bend, but that was a bit too acute. So we ended up cutting it down. We wanted to make sure that the ducting and ventilation worked properly. Now we've got a monitor in the studio which monitors all of the carbon monoxide, temperature, humidity, airborne chemicals, PM 2.5, which are little particles which can go breathe in and go into your bloodstream. So all of those things you don't want basically in your studio. So the idea with this airware element was it would, auto, it would always be on and monitoring the air quality in the studio. We've done a temporary install here of the ventilation system, the extraction system. So it's sort of mocked up and in place and we wanted to test how effective this was. So we've clamped the torch in place where it's going to be positioned. And we have these little um, smoke matches. We'll put a link to them down below. And uh, they run for 20 seconds at a go. And you can see where the um, air currents are moving. So at the moment there's nothing on, so we'll do a test. Hey! We've got a smoke monitor um, sitting up on that glass rack at the top. I'll um, come in there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to be happy now. <laughs> <laughs> These are non-toxic, by yeah, the way. Yeah. You have to be careful because there are ones that are toxic and you're not supposed to hold them. So. Drilled, uh, well, we, <laughs> the royal we, John, has drilled a hole in the wall there. We need to uh, stick a bit of foam in that to make sure that we don't see any daylight and uh, spiders and ants through it. So <laughs> there we go. Um, we're just going to go outside so you can see um, where that's going to. This is uh, our gas tank here. Um, at the moment, um, <laughs> in the UK, we've got a uh, a sort of crazy restriction on uh, propane gas tanks there's a shortage of them so we managed to find one and it's in here let's just open up this top you can see what's going on in here there we go so flashback arrester on the top of the propane tank there it's the 13 kilogram tank and there's the hole that we saw john do earlier on um so the pipe is coming from obviously inside the studio out into this and uh, we are just tidying up the pipes inside and then we're ready to give it a, a test firing. Woohoo! Right, we're a bit messy at the moment now, so um, we've got the pipes in place and we've just clamped the torch to the desk initially just to make sure that before we drill that desk and actually screw it into place that we're happy with placement. So um, John's just going to tidy up the pipe work and we're going to give a little sweep up, get rid of some of the tools. I'm going to give the uh, 
torch a bit of a blast. We've got some neat little clips there that just... Um, pea clips. Pea clips, are they? Okay. It's so cool because they look like a pea. <laughs> Not a pea. Well, that's very clever. They look like an hour there. Um, yeah, so we've got pea clips go on the pipe there. Yeah. And you're going to put that um, under the work surface just to get that out of the way, I guess, to stop people banging. Yeah, banging their knees, knees on it, catching it. Stuff when we're doing our workshops. And their wooden legs. And their wooden legs. Wow. We don't have many people with wooden legs. No, we're about to get loads of branches. Yeah. Uh, what do the instructions say next? Do not <laughs> approach a lit firework. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Mm. Turn on the oxycomp, so... Turn on. Yeah. Yeah. of adoption. Yeah, there it is. There's one. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. So we've got the kitty here, which is our little... Uh, there's some sort of issue there, then. Oh, all right, so... So it actually says, turn the machine on after the machine is warmed up approximately 30 seconds with the torch shut, which it is, um, the black ball will hover at zero. So I'm guessing all the popping and sighing is a standard thing, because that's hovering at zero. So um, if the black ball is between one and two, then you'll have a leak. So we don't have a leak because it's hovering at zero, which is perfect. So we've got oxygen then. The propane's turned on, and uh, so the next thing is we're going to light the torch. Do do with this? Just click it. Yeah, pull it together. Not that one. Squeeze it. Oh! Oh, blimey. Blimey. That was, uh, woo! Okay, so we've got a flame going in there, wow. Um, yeah, I'm a bit scared of this at the moment. <laughs> Turn the propane on first at the bottom and until you have about a six inch flame. Okay, that's fine. So there's your six inch no, flame. That's, no, that's, that's six inch. That's a six inch flame. <laughs> okay. And slowly turn on the oxygen to, uh, control. Um, and that should give you a blue flame. Hey! Hey! Fantastic! At the moment that flame is we're heading in. So I think we perhaps need that to be a bit higher. Yeah, so short than that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's our blue flame with the little candles uh, in that bit there. Yeah? Okay. When we turn it off, we turn the oxygen off first and then the propane. So um, the little um, mnemonic. mnemonic is poop. So we're going to turn the oxygen off first. Is that on? That's going on. So that's the oxygen going off. And then we would turn the propane off. We'll try the, the small torch, this is a mid-range plus, so we've got a little torch at the top. There's a little flame there, and we'll slowly give that a bit of oxygen. Okay, that's 
John has done the most amazing job on this. There's um, lots of room for the torch, the storage, the shelves, and the best bit. Oh, the best bit. Look at that. I've even got a light show. <laughs> I absolutely love it. We've got task lighting, we've got mood lighting. What can I say? Fantastic. Well, this is it. We're finished. After two weeks of um, really hard work on John's behalf, I have to say. So a huge thank you to John, because I wouldn't have been able to do this. But um, just look at it. Fantastic. So we are good to go with a lamp working setup here at Fire Glass. Um, obviously, our glass looks a bit sorry. Um, I do have some that I'm currently labelling up, so that's slowly going to get filled. And uh, the frit in my coffee bottles is going to get <laughs> filled. Um, we've got uh, the basic tools at the moment, but uh, I've made my first beads, so I'll get my first beads. These are my first beads. That's my first ever bead, which is rubbish. I'll put them in the light so you can see. There you go, that's better. It's really not even at all. That's my second bead. Not looking too bad. And that is my third bead, which I'm really quite proud of. So, uh, it's suffice it to say I've got the bug. <laughs> Let's just put those down there. We've got to um, get a kiln yet which um, actually sits in that corner we did make a cardboard version of the kiln mainly because i guess the important thing is to make sure everything fits properly um, if we're being serious so that we can actually uh, make sure we've got enough working space and we've got enough room to actually get things in um, so it, it's you know you can always look at the dimensions of something on a website but actually seeing it in reality uh, makes a big difference so um, we made it out of cardboard, if, if only they were that cheap. Um, so yeah, good to go. The only thing that remains now is for me to have some torch time and then um, the lamp working diaries will be about making beads, making baubles and making sculptures um, from here on in. So I hope you've enjoyed our sort of tour around how to put a lamp working set up in your studio. I've just had taken a delivery of the bead kiln. This is a Paragon SC3 bead kiln. Um, the difference between the SC2 and the SC3, my lovely assistant will shortly be donning his sequin leotard, but for now, he's going to open the door and show you. There's the bead door. Now inside, this is actually the difference between the SC2 and the SC3. So the SC2 is uh, 150 centimetres uh, tall, and this, uh, I believe, is 20 centimetres tall. So you get that extra um, five centimetres of room, which probably makes all the difference if you want to do things like sculpture and um, baubles. So really happy with that. And I think it's got the new... Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have to show you these. These are so cute. Look how tiny they are. They're little kiln shelf supports and we love those very much. It doesn't take much to uh, to amuse us, but you see that did. Uh, so yeah, so John's just about to install that. Um, we've got a hole in the work surface, so he's, uh, he's ended up chopping the wire, as you can see down there. Um, so we've got a three pin plug that he's just about to wire back up, which is great. And then uh, we'll see you when we switch it on. Yay! Nothing like a big change around. <laughs> so we originally had the kiln there, right in front of me. 
um, which was okay, but not much gap between the side of the glass storage and the kiln. And it does recommend 12 inches, although I have found that um, Paragon kilns tend to be a bit like the Kiln Care kilns, pretty much insulated and, you know, not too bad. So I think there is probably better. We've certainly got enough above it. Um, and we've just got shy of probably 12 inches either side. The aluminium uh, ducting is absolutely fine. So it did mean, because we, we had um, glass storage in that corner, it meant that glass storage had to move. So glass storage has now moved to here. But I'm actually quite pleased with this because I've got a new display area now. <laughs> so um, and I, I kind of got a little bit more display area, so I'm quite happy with that. So when people come on fusing workshops, you obviously need a bit of uh, inspiration. So me little rabbit boys sitting up there and uh, all me other stuff. So yeah, I'm cool with that. So I have, sorry, going to get a bit dizzy. Woo! There we go. I have a whole load of glass that's just arrived. Um, and I'm super excited. Um, so over here, let's just take you over here. I've already started, as you can see, uh, to unpack that. Um, and then there's all my tools that I need to move back to where they came from out of my lamp working area. Um, so I've got a bit of work to do this afternoon, but um, hey, hey, very excited because I've got lots of new things to play with now. So uh, yeah, pretty much set up. So this is where we are, all installed, and uh, this is t uh, today's date, so early 2024, and uh, it's it's just fabulous. You can see it's changed a little bit now that I've got used to working with it, but I think we'll do another video um, and look at the space in more detail now that it's in and talk about why I move things around. But um, my beads have changed, they're much better. <laughs> I'm absolutely loving working in this space. <laughs>